I'm good. Yeah. Uh, we want to start with the minutes as requested by Honorable Dango. Uh, the minutes of uh, the 10th of August. Yes, Chairperson, it's not yet 10 o'clock, Chair. Yes, yes. yes. And then uh, what we'll then do, uh, then it will be presentation uh, from the department. Uh, any apologies? Uh, I, I see the, I, I only see the apology from, uh, from uh, the acting DG. Yes, Chairperson. Uh, and also the minister is attending the same meeting. Okay. And uh, Honorable uh, Tim. Oh, yeah. And Honorable Mushod. Okay. Yes, Tim. And then, uh, okay. All right, not good. Because, Chairperson, before we start, I just want to check with the team from the department because uh, I don't see them. I don't know whether there is anyone from the department, but those that have given the name, like Mr. Travis as well, head of the delegation, and okay. Mr. Mpagera, they are not, they haven't yet logged in. Okay. If I might, if I might just check if there's anyone. Yeah, just, the check, just check with them. Yeah. Right. Okay. Chairperson, are we ready now? Yes, sir. Recording in progress. We are ready, Chair. Okay. Uh, let me then uh, take this opportunity to formally open uh, this meeting of the Select Committee on Transport, Public Works and Infrastructure, Public Service and Administration and Monitoring and Evaluation. Uh, is the meeting where we'll be hosting the, the department uh, to give us uh, an update in terms of uh, the uh, the uh, rural uh, road uh, uh, management system that they are using to get uh, uh, an overarching picture in terms of what is the status of both paved and, and paved roads. Uh, but also the, this meeting takes place after we had uh, an exciting uh, uh, oversight visit to Northern Cape. And uh, I must again express my appreciation on the, on the availability of the members to make sure that we're able to do our work. Uh, can we then uh, ask the community secretary to present the apologies to us? Thank you, Chairperson. And uh, good morning, honorable members and colleagues. The apologies that we have received are as follows. There's an apology of uh, honorable brother Thess, apology of honorable Mushodi, and a standing apology of Honorable Lansman. We also received an apology from the Minister and the acting, D -D, I mean, the acting Director General who are attending you know, the Cabinet uh, Committee meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, honorable members, uh, let's note to those apologies uh, and then uh, uh, move to the next item on the agenda. Uh, which will be the, the uh, minutes of the uh, meeting that we had uh, on the 
uh, 10th of uh, July, no, 10th of August, 10th of August, uh, where as the select committee were hosting the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure to give us an update in terms of the work uh, that's far done by the Infrastructure South Africa on the National Infrastructure Management Strategy and the progress report on the rollout of the infrastructure investment plan in a number of projects that uh, were signed off. Honorable members, uh, we start with the uh, committee members uh, that were present on that uh, uh, meeting. Uh, those are the attendees. Uh, and the apologies as reflected also. And uh, the next uh, paragraph deals with uh, our guests that were in attendance and the uh, uh, parliamentary uh, team uh, from the community secretary, the researcher, and also the community assistant. And those were the open remarks that were made. Uh, and the uh, presentation was led uh, by <clears throat> Minister and also uh, Professor Kamakopa. Those are the issues that were covered from 3.1 to 3.6. Uh, infrastructure investment rollout pipe, project pipeline and the progress on the strat strategic integrated projects, the infrastructure fund. And then those were the inputs, comments, and deliberations that were raised by honorable members uh, in terms of uh, the uh, feedback upon the presentation that was made. Uh, We can see that uh, the uh, committee dealt with the uh, key uh, progress on that and uh, the extent to which uh, uh, some of the success rates were raised and the, and the uh, shortfalls, uh, which was also indicated, but also the time frame in terms of some of the projects. Uh, you can also see the uh, uh, reflection on the small harbor program and the uh, uh, clarity that was given on the uh, flash damage to bridges, both in KZN and also in the, in the Eastern Cape. Yeah, those were the minutes. Uh, uh, other members, any reflection on those minutes? That's tabled. Chairperson, if I may, I was present. Thank, thank, thank you, Honorable Dango, for moving. I, can go I, was, I was present. I oh, was indicating, Chair, that he was present, but he's not recorded. Yes, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay no, I uh, can can you just uh, correct that in this? Uh, yes, I, I, I will, Chair. OK, beautiful. Uh, and then, uh, uh, put your hand also up. Yeah, uh, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, colleagues. I think I did send my apology. I don't know. I don't know because I don't see my, any apology from me. OK, uh, let's also add, uh, let, let us also add that uh, apology. Uh, thank you for that clarity, Honorable uh, Marafani. Uh, with the amendments made uh, to the minutes, can we then get a mover for that option? Can I, I, also, can I also make a correction, Chair? On, I think yes, 4.5. Yes, I think 4.5. I don't know whether it's uh, American English. 4.5. Uh, on, yeah, on small harbors. Uh, the spelling, I don't know is that uh, harbor, whether it's uh, American English. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's let's correct let's correct uh, spelling and uh, 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 members. Committee secretary will you will yeah. affect uh, the spelling on Harbour. Okay. With that, I second uh, the minutes. Uh, thank you, thank you, honourable uh, Chai. Therefore, the minutes are duly adopted. Uh, we will then uh, move to the uh, next item. Uh, we are informed that uh, uh, from the apology that we received, 
uh, we are informed that the uh, delegation uh, will be led by uh, Mr. Makoto Masala, uh, the Chief Financial Officer, who will be leading the investigation, uh, supported by Mr. Kushani and uh, Mr. Mapakela, uh, both the Chief Director of Road Engineering and the Director of Road Infrastructure and Industry Development. Uh, I see the hand of the Honorable Aplani. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Chair, I'm so sorry. I will uh, log out during the meeting because I'm traveling to St. Kate from Cape Town. Oh, that, that, that is noted uh, on the honorable planning. That is noted. Thank you. Uh, over to you, uh, CFO. Mr. Matala, are you with us? Yes. The floor is yours, Mr. Matala. Yes, Chairperson. I, I still see some two hands. I'm not sure, Chairperson, if they are all hands or what, or can I proceed? I just wanted to check my colleagues who are supposed to assist me were struggling with connection. I'm not sure if they are here, but then uh, let me check if I'm able to share the slide. I'll just Chairperson, uh, switch off my camera for, for the quality of the presentation. If you allow me to share the presentation, it, it will be done through two of my colleagues. Uh, the first one is about the rural road asset management, the chairperson and honorable members. And the second part, as you have indicated, the uh, honorable chairperson will be dealing with the uh, pro, pro, provincial root maintenance grant, as the chairperson have indicated, and and as you have noted, our apologies, our 18 DG and the DDG roads were unable to join us because they are attending a cabinet uh, a meeting this morning, and they asked that I lead the delegation uh, of the road branch. I just put the slide on, uh, on, on the here where I, I'm indicating chairperson that we will be presenting to the CELOC Committee on Transport, Public Service and Administration, Public Works and Infrastructure uh, this today, this morning. And the outline of the presentation chairperson and members, as you can see there, they will be giving a background of the provincial route maintenance grant and we'll also give a, a background on the rural route asset management grant. And then, then we'll go into detail, uh, firstly dealing with the rural route asset maintenance grant. And thereafter we'll present to the community, the provincial route management grant, the budget data, the 2014 to 21 analysis, the historical background of this uh, particular uh, grant the 2022 MTF allocation and also give the highlights on the 2022, uh, 2023 first quarter expenditure report chairperson. Then we'll also share with the committee, the provincial route maintenance grant physical indicators for the current financial year. We'll share with the members, the target that we have uh, uh, and the condition that we have put to the provinces and will give to the members the progress on the quota one report. Furthermore, we want to present to the audit committee, uh, to the uh, portfolio committee, select committee on the additional support that we are giving to the root uh, authorities and therefore thereafter share some recommendation. Chairperson, with that introduction, I'm gonna ask, uh, first of all, Msundis just to, to deal with the first part, then we will ask uh, Waitima Pagela to take the second part of the presentation. Through you, Honorable Chairperson, can, can Musundesi uh, do that? Indeed, indeed, uh, 
uh, they can uh, take over now as per your delegation. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, CFO. Just for introduction purposes, I've uh, showed my face. Uh, the name is Msundizi Funchane from the Department of Transport. Next slide. Uh, I'm talking on the Rural Asset Management Grant, which is transferred to, to local government at a district level. The grant funds the collection of data and the usage of rural roads in line with the road strategic framework of South Africa. So it's not necessarily building infrastructure, but it's helping to collect the data in order to plan effectively for the maintenance and building of roads. You will see this, uh, what I'm saying in the last slide of the presentation. The information provides guidelines as to what rules need to be built or prioritized first in terms of the extent, the condition, the traffic, the road safety hotspots, and the bridges. That information that uh, the grants focus is in collecting. When we started with the grant in 2011, we started with the 21 districts due to budget constraints, but now we have covered the whole country before the four districts. Of which under 44 districts, we have got all the local municipalities. The reason why we are transferring to the districts is for coordination purposes only, but the district they ensure that local municipalities participate and are kept uh, informed. Last slide. Next slide, sorry, not last. At the transferring officer in terms of the control framework published in DORA, Division of Revenue Act, is a transport department vote 40. The strategic goal is to ensure efficient and effective investment in municipal roads. We work with this strategic goal with the MIG, uh, which is administered by uh, COCTA. The purpose is to assist these municipalities to set up REMS, Road Asset Management System, and collect uh, road bridges and traffic data in the main. Next slide, please. These are the outputs of the conditional grant. And these outputs are reported quarterly to National Treasury, indicating uh, the data, the traffic, the borough pit management, road safety assessments data, and to at least prioritize the roads that make implement. Uh, that part is progress, uh, which is not necessarily uh, a complete exercise, is continuous. The priority, this grant is part of priority number five, special integration, human settlement, and local government. So it covers those areas of government of priorities. Next slide. These are the details that we require from the district municipalities in terms of their business plans. The business plans will, in the main, in terms of the contents, uh, contain the network hierarchy, the performance management, gap analysis, information, systems, life cycle planning, current and future demand, financial plan, monitoring, reviewing, plan for conditional improvements. These details are contained in a standard uh, framework called uh, technical methods for highways in terms of the asset management. We do this at uh, district or at local government and provincial and national level. Next slide. These uh, slides, I think next two or three, contain a set of conditions that we review every year with the district municipalities. Next slide. Yeah, these conditions continue. We have got set of rules in terms of classification, uh, class one, class two, class three. Then we set the time frame at which you must uh, collect and assess data. Then the other set of rules uh, is class four, class five, 
and to the list class six, which is non motorized transport, we set the time frame on which you must collect uh, the data. That is where we measure the age of data. Next slide. The conditions continue in this slide, uh, where we work with National Treasure, and also we've introduced a human capacity development uh, with the graduates that are employed at district level, that they must not only do the engineering part, they must also be able to do data analysis, uh, which concludes uh, or includes the data science aspect. You collect data, but you need to have a capability to maintain to, to, to analyze and maintain uh, going forward. Then we've got the allocation criteria. We count the local municipality under each district. Then we multiply that with uh, the extent of the network at that level. Next slide. The reasons why we did not uh, incorporate it in the website. Uh, the grant was negotiated with the uh, National Treasurer and uh, it was discovered or determined that Equitable Trade has a lot of demands. Let's create a new grant that will assist in collecting data. We didn't, when we started, we didn't have the statistics. Uh, for example, the data when you started, it was about 4%. And now we've covered the whole country and the data is 100%. What is continuing as a challenge is the data exchange format so that people can uh, submit information in a standardized way, interpreted in a fairly uniform way. And the next uh, row indicates the past performance. That's the audited financial outcomes. And the next one is the service delivery performance where we provide the figures of where we are. The most interesting one is that uh, in this program, we recorded a number of 159 graduates across the country. And that's what we need to argument when we say we've got a uh, human capacity intervention. So that number grows, not in terms of the quantity, but all in terms of also the quality. We have to train them, not necessarily recruit. Next slide. This slide uh, details or provides the responsibility of the transferring officer, which is the Department of Transport. Next one, you will see a couple of slides, I think three. This is now, this is the municipal uh, little responsibilities. And in this, we include provinces. And uh, so that the assist and municipal level in terms of coordination and providing the the strategic uh, special frameworks with the local municipalities or different parties in their own spaces. Next slide. Next slide, Chair. Yeah, this is the process of approval for the each year going forward in terms of 23, 24 in this case. So we expect district municipalities to submit uh, the business plans, which we call them road asset management plans. Uh, we did that by 31st of this year. And the plans contain the following information that is indicated. And uh, this is a standardized way. Uh, we completed the process of evaluating their business plans uh, by 30th of June, 2022. Then the transfers continued after that period, I think in August, we'll check the particular date. Next slide. Yeah, this is what I indicated in the preface of the presentation. This grant provide information which are stipulated also in the main municipal infrastructure grant when they plan the roads during their technical reports uh, prioritizing their projects, they use the information from the grant, uh, which is rural asset management, so that it helps them to plan better and prioritize uh, in a synergistic way. 
uh, in terms of their priorities. And the grant is allocated 150 million in this particular financial year, and the other figures uh, in going into the MTFP reward. Uh, that's the conclusion, Chairperson. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Puchani, for, for that presentation. Uh, the next presenter. Yeah, Chair, through you, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Waitima Pagela to take us through this one. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Mapagela. Thank you. Thank you once more, um, uh, uh, CFO. Thank you, Chairperson. And uh, Chairperson, I think we are meeting again. We, have, we had a very long weekend uh, or a long week in the Northern Cape last mm -hmm. week, and uh, it has been a successful one. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. And maybe before I start, Chairperson, I just want to indicate that uh, within the PRMG, we have got two components that we are dealing with. First of, of all, we deal with the, with the, the, the provincial route maintenance grant, which is a framework uh, to manage this conditional grant, and of which I've got a colleague here, Chairperson, that deals with the financials. And uh, if in, uh, with your approval, um, I think um, I'll just uh, request her that she take us through the financials then I'll come in to deal with the, with the physical part on how we are managing the physical infrastructure of the project so that there's a congruency uh, between what has been allocated, how it was spent, and what is the physical work that has been provided. If uh, the chairperson allows me that, I'll call upon or request the Zagan Mashimbe just to take the first part of that particular um, uh, 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 presentation, chairperson. Indeed, no problem, Senator uh, Thank you. Sakani. Sakani. Okay, Chairperson, maybe uh, she, uh, she has got the, the, the locking problem. Let me just say, uh, um, uh, talk to talk to that in the in the meantime. Uh, so what is happening, Chairperson, is that uh, much she as was we trying are to log in, she was kicked out and she tried to log in. I don't know if the host can make sure that she is admitted in the meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, the committee secretary will do that. But in the meantime, we can allow uh, the CFO uh, to to speak to the slides. When she gets in, then the CFO will give, will revert back to her. Yes, Chair, so this first slide is just show you the historical expenditure of the Provincial Route Maintenance Grant. You, you can see uh, the allocation over this period is a uh, 93.7 billion chairperson. And over this period in 2013 and 14, the, the, the provinces were able to spend uh, 8.2 billion. In 2014 and 15, they were able to spend 9 billion. In 15 and 16, uh, they spent 9.1 billion. In 16 and 17, they spent 9.9 .9 billion. And then in 17 and 18, Chairperson, they spent 10 billion. And 18 and 19, they spent 10.3 billion. And then uh, in the 19 and 20, they spent 11 billion. And in 2021, it went down to uh, 9.8 billion. And in the uh, previous financial year, it uh, increased again to 10.5 billion. So basically, that is the historical uh, spending of the PRMG grant. And you can see here below is some graphical uh, indication as to how the grant was spent in the particular provinces as indicated with the above schedule. So those two graphs basically are giving us the pictorial uh, uh, analysis of how the provinces and comparative to say, how much the provinces are getting. As you can see, some provinces which are big get the higher allocation than the, our smaller 
uh, provinces be based on the on the equitable share uh, calculation that is done by by treasury and I th and in the mix they also take the information from the rural root asset management tool which tell them where are the priorities of a particular MTSF period chairperson. Uh, so this is a breakdown as to uh, how much can be allocated per each component. You can see that the most highest component here is actually your construction with almost 39% of the allocation and other construction package contract also at 39. Then we have, as indicated, we have allocation for, for compensation of employees. We have got allocation for design, feasibility, project initiation, tender process, site handover, terminated. And, and then we also had a practical completion and final completion allocation, which are the stages that are determined. Uh, by the construction program in this uh, kind of a uh, land. The PRMG allocation are based on a formula that consider the following, the fuel sales, the vehicle kilometer travel, the condition of the network, as I indicated in my uh, previous comment, and the extent of the network per climate zone. The current PRMG percentage split and budget allocation for the current MTF cycle are indicated in the table below. This is the allocation chairperson for this current financial year that we are in. You can see that the uh, Eastern <coughs> is allocated uh, 357 million, Free State uh, 334, and then uh, Houten Province 1.7 billion, KZN 648, and then Limpopo province 21 and then Mpumalanga 226 and then uh, North, uh, Northern Cape 266 and then Northwest 239 and Western Cape 240. This uh, uh, allocation is uh, there is for the first tranche payment and uh, percent which amount to 2.8 billion. Then the Final first quarter expenditure against uh, tranche payment, you can see there in the period under review, the Eastern Cape allocation for April, uh, 14 million, then uh, Free State 86, Houting 992, KZN 137, and then uh, Limpopo 2.3. I'll not go each line by each, but you can see that the total allocation for the quarter is two is almost 1.7 billion and the deviation target as per the expenditure is 1.1 and which give us an expenditure of a, a deviation of 39% and as a total expenditure only as a And this is the details breakdown of the allocation of uh, expenditure per project in the current financial year, which as indicated is sitting at the 1.7 billion. The split per percentage, the planning stage, 8.3%, construction stage, 45%, construction package program, 44%, completion stage, 1.9. And I think from this, I can hand over back to, to Mr. Mapagela. Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you, you very you much, uh, uh, CFO. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, yeah, I just wanted to indicate, uh, Chairperson, maybe just to start with that uh, for the current financial year, as you see it on the, on the slide on the extreme left, uh, we had an allocation of 11.2 billion that uh, the, the CFO was talking about. So that we, we allocate it according to our outcomes or our indicators. So the indicators that we are trying to address is both the physical, which is the number of kilometers that we are trying to ad address and, and link that with the job opportunities that we want to create. So there we have the, the, the targets that we did set 
um, on all the indicators like kilometers of uh, upgrade, the re gravel, re seal. So those are the kilometers. I'm not going to get into too detail in terms of that. And what I can also confirm, Chairperson, is that uh, we are guided by uh, the targets that the provinces are setting because a province will look at their, their network and then uh, on the condition of the network, and then they will then come up with a target uh, uh, that they set. And we, we, we consolidate those targets to form the national target. So the same with the job opportunities, when you look at the extreme left on the social indicators, we are, we are, we are assisting provinces to uh, create those job opportunities and ensure that the uh, women, youth, and people with disability benefit from from the grant itself. So maybe you can go to the next slide. So for the current financial year, Chairperson, as I've already indicated, each province submits their, their target. So you can see that the, 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 the way they set target it differs from province to provinces. So when you look at the first column, we have got the rehabilitation in terms of the square meters. So those are the ones you look at Eastern Cape, they didn't set any target there in yellow and then um, but we don't penalize them because uh, the way they set their targets is according to how they did it but they sometimes uh, there are disparities that we we, uh, we, uh, we identify where you find that the road uh, the road network in that particular uh, province it needed a particular intervention but the province will deliberately ignore that that is where we come in and and guide the province or push the province towards uh, addressing those especially if, if for instance their roads are very uh, gra most i mean they are, they are the greatest network of their province is gravel and you find that they don't allocate any budget uh, on on, on re-graveling and blading that is where we come in and say you can't put a, mi a minimum of that so but uh, just on the analysis itself you see that uh, from quarter one and um, um, we have been some some uh, under achievement especially on the rehab uh, those red ones you, you see there on, on percentage, but uh, we are pleased to, to, to see that uh, uh, on the re graveling and also on the blading, you see the green uh, is more than anything. So provinces are doing well, especially when it comes to uh, the, the blading and also on the graveling, which is on the unpaved road network. So that is encouraging, but uh, um, yeah, yeah, that is what we are, we, are, we, are, we are trying to monitor provinces on. But that needs to be aligned to uh, the tranche that we are giving to the provinces. So uh, yeah, maybe we can go to the next slide. So on the next slide, uh, uh, on in uh, in terms of quarter one performance, you see that quarter quarter one we we have achieved more on the black top patching uh, without getting into too detail. So, and uh, because of the previous uh, or the recent uh, floods that did happen uh, with some of the, 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 the floods happening, those, uh, those in, in Eastern Cape and, and, and KZN. So those are the ones that increased the, the target that were set for the, um, uh, the, the black top pitching. But we, we anticipate that uh, with the program, the new program that the minister just launched on the 8th, it will really um, make the, the, I mean, nationally to be Overperforming in terms of the uh, the the paved network on the portal pitching. Can we go to the next slide? Um, in terms of the the, the the provincial route maintenance grant, we we are now uh, re revisited. We have revisited the the manner in which the grant has been has been utilized, with a special focus now on the the preventative maintenance. So looking at this, uh, we're also looking at the value position where we, we will prioritize the route classification and we look at the rollout of the central uh, asset management and data warehousing services, where the department, uh, provinces, municipalities and central work together in terms of assisting provinces to identify, track and, um, and, and, and deal with the, with the portals. And then we'll also look at the strategic route transfer to central so uh, as I've indicated when we were with the, with the FITEC committee, we, I indicated that uh, where provinces fail to deliver on their constitutional mandate, they have got the opportunity in terms of the central act to request from the minister through their, their, their premiers to request for those rules to be ceded to central um, so that central can provide a seamless infrastructure 
to increase access and mobility in their provinces. So we are also looking at uh, the rules that are not, uh, uh, they don't qualify in terms of the, the transfer. They, then the MOUs are signed between Sandral and provinces uh, where uh, Sandral can help provinces to address those challenges. And where necessary, uh, the MOUs can be signed with the, I mean, between provinces and the municipalities because uh, most of the, the strategic provincial and municipal road network, they go through towns and, and you find that uh, that national route, then the conditions become somehow different from what it is. So the MOU is the one that will be able to facilitate uh, that particular um, intervention. So we also putting in place a sustainable funding model to implement the role out of all uh, the issues that were raised there. But uh, on the Samba Songke chapters, and I can just indicate that the SA conditional grant, we are currently limiting that to, um, to um, uh, uh, preventative maintenance. In this, in this case, things that will stop our, our roads to have potholes, uh, things like grass cutting, uh, vegetable clearance, stump uh, drainage, block paving, all, all those are the things that we are trying to put in place to ensure that uh, we don't come to the level where a patrol is there. But once it is there, they, there needs to be a plan to address the patrols. Can we go to the next slide? The next slide, please. Um, on the additional support for the provinces, uh, that is where we, we have requested the, the, tec the technical and the experts that is already there with Sandra to address the issue of the preventative maintenance, as I've already indicated, uh, by ensuring that uh, we do the reseal where necessary, we do the, the patrol patching where it's required, and then we cut the grass, we, we, we clean the culvert. Those are the things that, uh, that help us in terms of ensuring that we clean or we, 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 we take out the water from the, from the surface as quickly as possible. Next slide. So this, I think I've already spoken about them, the crack ceilings, the cleaning of the drainage. Uh, but what I can emphasize is that uh, it is more costly to address uh, the road once it, it goes beyond the maintenance uh, activities, uh, especially uh, once we don't uh, provide uh, the, the preventative maintenance. So there, maybe just quickly, just to indicate that uh, for the routine road maintenance, here are the the cost that we, we think it needs to be standardized across the country, because uh, sometimes there is a disparity. You go to one province, you find that uh, for a particular intervention, um, one province will, will go too high, and, uh, but we know exactly what the, what the quarter manual uh, is, is directing us in terms of the cost per uh, either square meter or per kilometer in terms of that particular. But when you look at the portal itself, um, or resale, uh, it costs between 70 rent to 150 a square meter uh, over a 10 year period. So those are the things that we are using to determine how the, the preventative maintenance needs to be addressed so that we don't even go to the, to the area where our roads are beyond repairable. Can we go to the next slide? So um, on the preventative maintenance, it will be best to address the potholes or uh, the, the, the preventative maintenance before we come to the level where the red lines will, uh, will, 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 will really make it impossible for us to uh, address the road. So uh, on the green point is where we need to try and, and put our, our maintenance at so that it doesn't cost the department more than is necessary on the maintenance part. Can we go to the next slide? Um, to address the portal, as I've indicated earlier, Chairperson, we are looking at the at three areas. The first one is to, uh, to do the, the road network verification. In this case, it will mean that the, uh, the authority concern, whether it's a municipal or a provincial roads, they need to provide us the, the network or the, uh, the condition of the road that will, uh, uh, that will be captured on the, 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 the national uh, repository which is the, the, the Sandal's uh, IT, ITIS uh, system, where the road, once it has been uh, uh, captured, and then it will then uh, uh, be used to formulate 
um, a road and also look at the, at the condition of that particular road network. And then once it's done, then the road will be classified either as a, as a I mean, based on the verification. And then um, uh, uh, once it's, it has been verified, and then the road will then uh, be allocated to a particular province uh, at number three. So in this case, because uh, once we have got the portal that has been reported, we don't know where the location of that particular route, which province, but the ones that has been captured and then it, it has been inserted in the system, Sandal will be able to, to know who's the, 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 the ownership or in which ownership that particular route belongs to. And then also the condition of the port road, and then uh, also the likelihood for that to be attended as quickly as possible. So uh, that will also fall step number two, which will come on the next slide. Next slide, please. So on step two, the ITS system, and then it, it then directs uh, the, because we have got two systems. The first one is to, it is the, the road authority app. Uh, and the second one is the public app. So the road authority app enable the road authority, either a municipality or a province to utilize that particular app in terms of uh, reporting, in terms of uh, manipulating data to determine the actual condition of the road. And once that is done, um, is then that uh, that particular information is generated. But at the very same time, we know that uh, it's not only the road authorities that are, are utilizing the, rate, uh, the, road, the road network. We have also the public. We allow the public as they identify the portals on our road, they will be able to, to utilize that particular app, take a picture of that, and then it will generate uh, the condition of that particular portal. Send, I mean, allo allocate it to a particular uh, uh, province. Then where the challenge is, is whose ownership is that, which is something that the uh, Sandal has, is already uh, trying to, to do. And then uh, uh, if you look at the number two, which says using the Sandal IT as public uh, app, uh, we will be able to capture that. But at, uh, currently uh, from the 15th of August, that has been done through the, the Android and then followed by, by uh, the, the app store uh, of, uh, from the since we have launched the program on the 8th of August. So these are the system that is already happening. But uh, this should should be able to quantify the extent at which this portal is, it is currently. Next slide. Um, on the uh, the immediate solution, utilizing the uh, the the, uh, the the authority app. We are able to, to de develop the special data and uh, for the maintenance team. So once that has been generated, we need to have a fully functional uh, maintenance team from the province where a, a portal has been reported. We should know where should it go there? Where should it go to? Who is uh, the responsible person from the province to deal with that particular app? And once that has been done, uh, the app will be able to generate an information to the person who reported it, if it, it, it comes from the uh, from the public app, so that the uh, information updates that particular person to say, we have received this information. This is where it is. This is what the, the department is doing from the province. And then, uh, and how long will it take to fix that particular app? Next slide. Uh, on the, 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 the step number four, then we resolve the identified portal repair, uh, which might have the following issues to be resolved, which is the labor. So in this case, we'll tap into the existing provincial uh, in-house team service uh, providers, if any, and then uh, to address that particular uh, portal. And also we tap into the Department of Public Works and, and uh, Public Works and Infrastructure utilizing the extended public works program, because uh, the, one of the key area for this particular program is to ensure that as we address the portal chairperson, we are also contribute significantly towards uh, job creation and then uh, following the, 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 the extended public works methods that has been developed by the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. And then if labor force via, uh, sorry, it, uh, it, if labor force via the public works program, not possible, then Sandal will then source directly employed workforce with focus on women, youth, and people with disability. And then we'll also um, 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 uh, prioritizing the plant or material that is required for the repair. Uh, uh, 
be to be tapped locally uh, with the provincial arrangement. And then we also want to tap into the Sundance uh, routine route maintenance service providers appointed per local municipalities, because if work is already happening in a particular province, Sandal is not going to reinvent the wheel or do something that is very, very new. We'll have to utilize the very same information or the same resources that are in the province, work closely with the provinces, work closely with the municipalities and ensure that their work continues. So can we go to the, to the next slide? So to address the remaining problem, uh, uh, we will want Sandal to be directly involved. And then maybe just to couple that, that uh, we, have, we have already, um, uh, uh, the minister have already approved that Sandal sign MOU with, uh, with the provincial departments in the provinces. And then uh, to, to be able to tap into some of the funds that Sandal has, especially in terms of the app, in terms of the, the that they have, the ITIS, so those are the things that the MOUs are, are in place. And also letters have been uh, written to all the 44 district municipalities to bring them on, in, on board so that uh, they are assisted in terms of that. And also to ensure that uh, all those authorities where we have identified the, the in-house team, that we, there is a specific person that has been registered to, to be uh, the go between the province and the municipalities. And then once that is done, Sandal will make use of the existing road authority staff um, uh, appointed or appointed service provider in all the, the district municipalities. Uh, once this is in progress to work closely with that because it doesn't matter where a public is, wherever he can pick up a, 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 a portal, he should be able to utilize that public app to, 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 to collect information. And then once that information is sent to the ITIS, that Sandal is hosting, it needs to generate that information throughout the country so that whoever authority is responsible for that can be able to address that. So Sandal also to ensure that the workforce is trained on how the, the app is being used and also how the, the repair of the portal can be done. So it's not just something that they would, would be left to the provinces. So the provinces are, uh, and the municipalities will then get that particular special training to deal with the, with the issue of the controls in terms of the response rate, how to prepare, how to address, and how to fix the portal. So those are the things that they, we think will also help us in terms of addressing the challenges on the ground. Next slide, please. So on the, uh, the completed outstanding for the transfer, I'm not going to get into too detail in terms of that, but I can just indicate that uh, um, um, at the beginning, uh, looking at the, the, the mandate of Sandal, which was solely for the, for the maintenance, rehabilitation, the funding of the national road network, uh, their network was only limited to 25,000 kilometers of, this, of the national road network. Now that uh, uh, the mandate has been revised, Sandal is now uh, uh, given the mandate to go beyond that uh, to ensure that uh, um, they also assist the provinces in terms of that. So the department and MINMEC took a decision that Sandals network need to go beyond 25, uh, up to a maximum of 35,000 kilometers based on the resolution that was taken by MINMEC in 2018. Uh, yeah, so, and that will include the transfer of the provincial strategic road network that uh, provinces are struggling to, to provide the, I mean, adequate funding for those particular um, uh, roads. And then uh, the province can feel free to request through the premier to transfer those roads to Sandal. But uh, where uh, the province needs to keep those particular road network, then they can facilitate that process through the support of Sandal uh, by signing the MOU with Sandal. I think I just wanted to summarize it on that level, Chairperson. And then the next slide. Um, and this, wh where we had the, a, 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 the biggest challenge, Chairperson, I've indicated that uh, we, we have roads that, uh, that, that are belonging to Sandal, which are all the, the, the blue or the green, let me call it the blue ones. Those are the, the, the Sandal roads that are connecting all the provinces. But at, as we go through towns to towns or uh, through 
uh, the CBD areas, you'll find that those roads then become the municipal, either municipal or provincial roads. And then uh, looking at the, the various uh, resolutions that were taken before 2010 uh, and, and then in 2018, and lately now uh, in 2020, 2021, there are some remaining roads that still needs to be transferred to Sandra. So those sections of the road with the resolution that have been taken uh, are the roads that will be transferred to Sandra. Um, uh, the one that you can see, they are just linking, they are not uh, uh, properly um, uh, uh, connected, especially uh, in, in the towns. Then they will be then be given to Sandra uh, based on that one. I just wanted to highlight that. Can you go to the next slide? So on the road maintenance, uh, we have got the medium term solution. So uh, seeing that uh, the challenges that we are facing in chapter seven is not only limited to government. Uh, the department have already started with the consultation, uh, consulting uh, the, the private sector where they will come and play uh, their specific role. So in this case, it will, will look at the corporate social responsibility that the uh, Sandal will play, especially when a road cut across a, a municipality, Sandal will do that. And also to, uh, for Sandal to look at the, um, at the at section 18A application for SARS to, 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 uh, to assist those companies that are outside government when they, they partner with us, there will be a special concession that the, uh, the I mean Sandal and the department will request from SARS to, uh, to exonerate from paying the, the, I mean, the tax in terms of uh, their participation. So this is how we think we, we will be able to bring in uh, the private sector and, and yeah, and, uh, to assist in terms of addressing the, the, the condition of the road network. Maybe just to highlight one of the issues, uh, when we were visiting one of the, the mines in the, I mean, in Khartoum, so there is a, a lot of material that is just lying everywhere there. That I think, uh, in terms of the the, the 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 classification of material, it can be a good material for, for for road construction, which is something that we need to tap into and see how how the the, the mining industry can be able to contribute towards uh, uh, towards uh, the betterment of our road, the road network with the material that are heavy. So, can we go to the next slide? So the other thing, uh, Chairperson, that we have identified is the, the Adopt a Route Program, uh, which is a program to, uh, to be used by individual or organization or businesses to help maintain sections of the road as volunteers or to hire a maintenance service providers to perform the work of, the, of their rehab. If you can remember in the, uh, around 2012, 2013, we had a special grant for um, coal haulage, where we requested uh, the mining industry um, in the Mpumalanga, Gauteng, and, 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 and a bit of Sandal, where those roads that are used for coal haulage to transport material from the mines to where gener I mean, electricity is being generated, they had a special allocation to ensure that those roads or the condition of those roads don't deteriorate further because uh, Doing that, it might uh, uh, have a serious effect in terms of the the, uh, the, the the electricity generation. So those are the things that we think, uh, Chairperson, we still need to review them and see how they can be utilized. And this will be done uh, taking into consideration the road authority requirements, things like job creation, skills development as well, and also participation uh, that will include more of the following activities in collaboration with the uh, when we do the grass cutting, gravity removal, cleaning of the drain, uh, drainage, uh, crack sealing, so, uh, that is where we'll need partnership, not just the government alone, so that uh, we increase um, uh, the, or maximize participation. And then route adoption will typically uh, span up to five kilometer for a period between two and three years. Uh, the relevant authority will also erect and adopt a road sign with a adopted route to acknowledge the adopters. So if for in case we take a SA brewery, uh, adopting a specific length or a, a specific, five, let's say five kilometers of a route cutting across a particular community will allow that particular uh, SA brewery 
to market uh, the, themselves, but utilizing the logo that uh, we have uh, developed as government, that that part partnership is, uh, is, is fully marketed and is, is also fully recognizable. So can we go to the next one? So the road maintenance, maybe uh, uh, because the, these slides are, are many, maybe I just need to 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 touch on the on the on the, on the key ones. So on the performance based, um, we we are lo looking at the unlocking major infrastructure projects and then reduction in the negative environment impact uh, due to the current uh, route uh, within three years, and then we look at the efficient use of uh, gearing of government grants and maximizing efficiency. Uh, to create through economic of scale. And then just not to get into that, but the, the key here is to increase job creation. Uh, as we know that uh, South Africa, especially youth, uh, are amongst those that are without jobs. So we are also see how we can maximize the I mean, job creation within the, uh, the, 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 the road construction and maintenance framework. Can we go to the next slide? So progress to date. So currently, Chairperson, I can just uh, maybe just to take a little bit of time on this to say Sandra have already uh, already have a system which we call the ITIS, which is an integrated transport information system, uh, being developed and available as a tool, and and also taking into uh, cognizance that uh, some of the provinces have already have some system that that they are utilizing, but it is felt that we needed to have a centralized uh, data repository where all the provinces can uh, uh, submit their data and then uh, to one port where information can be tapped into that rather than having uh, to approach this in a, a piecemeal approach. So this, uh, the first bullet is to be is that Sandal have already started with the network verification, including building a special route network on the ITIS and then a training on how to upload uh, own data. In this case, I'm referring to provinces and extra relevant reports into the centralized repository services for traffic and road condition data has already begun chairperson. Road asset management services, which include data analysis, identification and technical services required, project resource allocation. And what this is what Sandal is currently uh, finalizing. And then a data, a data capture, a capture on date, uh, sort on road accidents and associated information is some of the things that we are looking at, and also to capture all relevant details on the SMME employed on all the projects. As I've, I've said, that the job creation is one of the key elements, and then the ability to undertake virtual project monitoring using the mobile app. So the app is not only just to detect uh, where the, the where the, the, the port role is, but it will also assist in terms of uh, consolidating some of this information and ensure that uh, we all learn from, uh, from this. And after six months, once this is done, we'll come back and re, uh, reconverge as a, as a country with all provinces and municipalities, see what works, what doesn't work, and then maybe uh, come up with a new approach in terms of that. The National Port Role Repair Program was launched. I think um, uh, this one, we know that uh, it was launched in, um, uh, in Gauteng by the minister, but uh, similarly, all provinces were doing the same uh, simultaneously in all the provinces on the on the 8th of August. So next slide. Yeah, so what, uh, what will be happening is that uh, the TMH18, uh, as I've indicated previously, it will, it will help us in terms of zooming into where uh, the, the, the port rules are, because if you look at the way our, I mean, how our road network has been uh, classified, we have, we still have the missing data, where we have got the uh, road network that is not um, um, uh, captured or that what is not uh, been categorized. We don't know who is the ownership. And then, uh, and once a road is not classified, uh, it cannot be maintained, it cannot uh, be taken responsibility of, because no authority is uh, responsible for that like the private roads that goes to the military, to the, you know, all those things. So this app will help us in terms of uh, uh, also classifying those particular uh, roads and also do the verification. Next, uh, next slide, please. Um, on, uh, still on the TMH uh, aging road network verification. 
So I can just indicate that uh, uh, Sandra Lef already communicated with all the districts. And most, most, let me just say most of the districts, and you will find that uh, each district tried it, its own best, but with information that has been captured because they've, they were, they've been utilizing different system to capture information. Some of them are not compatible for the ITIS that Sandal is, is utilizing. So Sandal have already indicated that uh, they, they needed to be assisted uh, by these provinces to ensure that data that has been collected is in, in a similar or in the same format that Sandal will be able to utilize that to, uh, 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 for the G, uh, GIS mapping. For the for the for, for their road network. So the, here in Limpopo, you can see that uh, the the Capricorn, the uh, Mopani, the Kuku, the Vembe, all of them they 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 don't have a uh, um, information uh, that have been quantified uh, uh, in the system. So there's still a, a lot of work that needed to be done. So you can see that the uh, the only province that try to um, to to assist. Uh, you look at the Namakwa and the Northern Cape uh, on this slide. We, they have, they have got already the update, up, uploaded data on the on the 2020 sorry on the system ITIS system, which is a uh, 2021 22, sorry 2021 which is uploaded. And also when you go to the Western Cape, there you'll find that they've uh, they uploaded the Karu data on the uh, for the 2021. Even though uh, the, the the Cape Winelands they've done the 2019 data, but this is work in progress. Um, and then let's uh, go to the next slide. You'll find that the uh, uh, the Western Cape Overbeck they for that uh, for the 2019 uh, KZN Kintletoayo and Umkanyaguti. Those are the small. I mean the the rural municipalities that we thought they won't be able to do that, but some of them they are complying. So which is which means that the once the data is, is, I mean, the information is compatible with the, the system that Sandal is, is utilizing, which means uh, by the end of uh, uh, September, we'll be able to upload at least more than 50% of the, of the data that has been verified and then be utilized for that particular information. So I'm, I'm not going to go to, uh, to each and every province and each and every municipality. Can we go to the next one? So on the number of public, app downloaded so we will start um, uh, we have started with the launch on the 8th of august so at a very very low uh, low level but uh, because uh, we, we we identified those rules uh, for the launch where we allowed sandal to to capture information on that particular route because uh, when the minister and the MECs go on live and then they maybe the media wanted to uh, to test the system so those roads on the 8th were already been captured on the ITIS system of Sandran. So uh, since then, so provinces, all the provinces have already started. And then we believe that uh, by the 16th of, sorry, yeah, by the 16th of August, uh, 2020, we were, we were supposed to have received at least more information from the provinces to allow the, uh, both the, the Android and also the iOS and, and uh, apps, sorry, the, yeah, the apps to start functional. But the unfortunate part is the lack of compatible information that is coming from the provinces, especially from those uh, municipalities that we have seen on the previous slides. Uh, next slide. So um, on the portal rep uh, reported, so I can just indicate that uh, since the age, so uh, as provinces go along, there are communities uh, based on information or statement that the minister made. They have already started to capture information. And then uh, you can see that uh, some of the provinces are uh, well ahead, but uh, some of them um, are not moving that much. Uh, you look at the Mpumalanga and Northwest, they are not reporting that much, but you look at the uh, Gauteng and also Limpopo, the numbers are too high. And then, uh, uh, yeah. So, which means that uh, there is an appetite from the from the public to start reporting these portals. And as we move on and we capture this information, so we will be able to 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 understand the extent of the portals in the in the in the country, so that we are able to address them. Can we go to the next slide? 
uh, the recommendation on this. So for this, we recommend that the members of the Select Committee on Transport, Public uh, Service and Administration uh, take note of the presentation and um, uh, provide some directive or uh, inputs where necessary so that uh, we can be able to move with speed in terms of uh, implementing the, the Samba Songe and the RMS program to assist uh, both provinces and municipalities. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Mapagela, uh, for taking us through this last part of the of the presentation. Uh, what we will then do, we will uh, invite uh, input, uh, engagement, and uh, answering questions from the honourable members uh, of the select committee. I hope I have noted honourable Dango. Uh, Honorable Matevula. Uh, let's, let's start, let's start, uh, then Honorable Fai. Uh, let's start with Honorable Dango. The place was. Chairperson, thank you very much. Chairperson, uh, do, does the department take into account the, the question of population density? Uh, when they are coding budgets and when they are doing repairs. Let me make an example of the area from Orange Farm to Johannesburg. There's more than a million people there. Um, have they looked at the R75 to upgrade that particular road so that people don't go onto the N1? Now, the railway has been stripped completely there, so people are using taxis more and more. Um, have they looked at actually shifting people from uh, the N1, which uh, the taxis can't really afford, to the R75, which is the major road into Johannesburg and to Tswani? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Honorable Dango. Honorable Matibula. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. And, uh, I welcome uh, the presentation. Um, in the presentation, you have indicated that, that there's 13,853 roads that are identified district and municipalities. Can we at least, because here we are dealing with uh, provincial issues, if we can have the total breakdown of uh, 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 those numbers, for example, you say in, in Limpompo, in this uh, municipality, in this district, we have such numbers so that we can be able to trace what you are presenting about. As well, in, in also in the recruitment of graduates, we like to get the breakdown per province and the gender as well. And then on your presentation as well, you have indicated that uh, uh, there is an app that was introduced to report portals. As you know that uh, in South Africa, not everyone is, uh, is owning a smartphone. Uh, more especially from us we ca who come from rural areas, we have challenges based on network. You will find that the person wants to record the portal, but uh, she doesn't have a smartphone and, or there's a challenge of network to re report such things. So I just wanted to check with you, do you have a consider other methods of communication, communicating with communities, uh, especially in rural areas. Uh, and then as well, you, you have said in your presentation that uh, uh, you are going to use the uh, EPWP workers. And then if it's not possible, you are also going to employ Workers, I just want to find out: Are you going to employ these uh, people uh, temporarily, 
uh, or permanently that you will uh, recruit people that will always patch uh, portals and what method are you going to use to recruit uh, uh, such uh, uh, people? And then uh, uh, I want to put your attention that there was a road in a, we a road in a, uh, Giani from Ngobe to 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 Shukumba, which she was cost, which cost forty million. That road was uh, at some point being in social media and media that it was constructed using wheelbarrows. And then when I was driving to that road, I realized that that road is not in a, a very good condition. So anytime it can have portals and all those kind of things. So, and also I wanted to check with you, Corey, um, what kind of method or program are you using to go to, to go and do oversight in, in the, in, in, in when the road is constructed before you open it. As well, there's a road between Dingamazi to Shimange village. There was a contractor last year who was closing a port there. day. But through looking, when you drive to that road, you can see that uh, those uh, portals was not patched very well. The road is not very good at all. As well, there's a road uh, between uh, Shimange to Joko village. Uh, that road, it, uh, it was constructed, but it, the, the contractor did not finish it. It's a white elephant. And uh, it's also five kilometers there. So I just want to check with you what plans uh, or programs do you have to look at such roads? Because the uh, uh, Sandra go out and, and, and uh, do roads, but at the end of the day, uh, they open roads that are not in good condition. So I just wanted to check with you, Corey, what programs are, are you having to, to check up uh, those roads? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Matibula. Honorable Hai. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. Greetings uh, to you and uh, uh, Honorable Members, uh, the Department and the uh, Staff of Parliament, uh, and, yeah, and PMG. Um, Chair, let me first uh, express my concern um, about uh, the late. Uh, the submission of the presentation. Uh, yesterday, I was uh, concerned uh, that uh, we didn't have uh, the presentation by yesterday for a meeting that is today. Uh, usually, we get uh, the presentation by Friday so that over the weekend, uh, we can thoroughly go through the, uh, the presentations. Uh, I had to phone uh, the committee secretary to find out whether we still continue with the meeting uh, or not. But also uh, yesterday were challenges of uh, the ITC in parliament. Um, even though uh, that, that contributed, that I wouldn't say that was the only issue that uh, uh, resulted in us getting the presentation late. It's clear that the department sent the, the, the presentation late but but also the the situation was made worse by uh, the the ITC of Parliament. So I think a, a, a very detailed uh, uh, presentation, and also it's the first time as a committee that we're dealing with this uh, uh, kind of a report, which has uh, uh, elements of being technical. And therefore, it needed the uh, one to have uh, more time to go through this uh, uh, presentation. 
because uh, we receive it uh, after one and we were already preparing to attend the the plenary session uh, yesterday uh, afternoon so i just wanted to express that uh, uh, concern the first uh, um, because now one has not been able to to thoroughly go through the presentation uh, but nevertheless i i have a, a question I could dot uh, down uh, as I was going through this uh, 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 the, the presentation. So, um, I, I just wanted to find out with regard to the municipal infrastructure grant, because in some municipalities, I don't know whether there, there would be a ring fenced uh, within the, the, the MIG, uh, there would be uh, and monies that are ring first, uh, ring first for for road construction. Well, my my understanding, I may be wrong here, that uh, the the MIG is for any infrastructure related. Uh, 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 is a grant for any infrastructure related uh, uh, issues, uh, not necessarily road. Uh, so I wanted to check if uh, there the, the would be a reinforced uh, amount uh, dedicated towards a uh, road construction or road maintenance, uh, so that you you don't just give uh, the 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 grant which is uh, administered uh, by Copter, but you find that the municipality spends the, the grant on infrastructure related uh, uh, issues but not necessary uh, road construction or road maintenance, patches and plating, all those uh, uh, categories. The, the, the other issue I wanted to check uh, on, on slide four, it says uh, uh, incentives will be introduced uh, uh, to the municipalities. I just want to find out what, what, what kind of uh, 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 I just want to go to the to the slide uh, if you, uh, you allow me. I just want to to read what it exactly says. Uh, that, uh, which, which slide is that, Chair? I'm so just the, checking. The, the, There's a slide that talk. Maybe the department will be able to 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 know about it. <clears> but <throat> the, the slide that talks about uh, the incentives that will be given to uh, to 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 uh, municipalities uh, if uh, they 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 send uh, the 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 information. Um, I, I was thinking that it was a slide uh, uh, for, but I'm making a mistake. But uh, I'm sure the the department uh, would know. If I may just uh, leave that one for now, uh, and you want to find out with regard to the the past performance uh, uh, on RAMS uh, conditional grant framework. It says uh, the past performance, which is 2020, 2021, uh, there was a 63% uh, that was spent uh, out of the 108 million that was allocated and transferred to municipality. Uh, I don't think 63% uh, when you see the conditions. Uh, I think it is the slide that speaks to the uh, rural uh, road uh, yeah. conditional grant framework. Yeah, this one. Yeah, one yeah. After, yes. So uh, that, can you go up again? The one that, that has 2020 to 2021, and then 2021 to, uh, yeah, that's the one that speaks to 63%. It's not yeah. this one. The one that has uh, reasons not incorporated in equitable share and past performance. I think that is the one. The one that has reasons not incorporated in equitable share and past performance. Let's go up or, or go down, go down. I think go down, yes. Again, yes, let's go. The one after the one after this. Yes, again. 
go go it will be after this slide yes this one this is the one chair okay uh yes 63 percent that was not bad i think 63 percent I don't see it as an achievement, uh, um, uh, because it means that for about 37% 30, uh, was not uh, uh, achieved. So, and uh, also there are no reasons uh, that uh, are provided. Um, chair, also, in the, in the, in the uh, uh, um, presentation, um, it, is, it is said that, uh, in terms of responsibility of municipalities, uh, that they should make provision uh, to maintain uh, 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 ramps after the uh, the lifespan of grant. I just wanted uh, more explanation uh, what is meant by uh, uh, by that. I think it's on slide day fifteen, uh, if I'm not mistaken. If, if there could be clarity on that. Um, on the responsibilities of municipalities, but also then on the responsibilities of uh, the transferring officers. Uh, it is said that, uh, that uh, the transferring officer should ensure that municipal road authorities conduct a regular condition assessment for paved and unpaved roads. I mean, you, you find that the, you, you, you have those challenges of the unpaved roads. Uh, does it mean, therefore, the the risk, the the transferring officers are not uh, doing the their work uh, now that uh, you 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 have those challenges of uh, 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 unpaid, uh, I mean unpaved uh, roads. Um, but the other issue I wanted to check here is that it relates to the roles of uh, the department and the Department of, Department of Transport and the Department of Public Works uh, as to where is the link between what the Department is of Public Works and Infrastructure is doing with regard to <coughs> the program called the Wellesis uh, that is responsible for rural bridges uh, uh, and also the, the, the rural roads. Where is the link? Where do uh, is there any sharing of information with regard to uh, this well is a, a program? Um, there's another slide that uh, says talks to the issue of a uh, submission of completed uh, quarterly reports. It uh, talks about the template and that this uh, should be submitted uh, 30 days after the end of each quarter. Just wanted to check if provinces are meeting uh, uh, this uh, particular target. Um, the, on PR, uh, yeah, PRMG, there's also with regard to the budget uh, paid out vis-a-vis uh, -vis the actual expenditure. Uh, see on slide 20, uh, it is said that uh, the Western Cape spent 100%, uh, but also there's a, in terms of deviation, there's 14, I think 14 million. If there could be an explanation about the 14 million, where where did it get that uh, from? Uh, 14 million, 684,251. Uh, and there's also another slide that uh, uh, talks about uh, the, the project stages. If you can go to that uh, slide that talks about the project stages. Because I wanted uh, clarity on the, yes, that what the the on hold. There's an amount of nine hundred or million. Uh, what is on hold uh, mean? Uh, but then there's a money that is allocated. So if uh, we could uh, have clarity with regard to uh, uh, those uh, that particular issue, the. I heard that you say that uh, there was no penalty with regard to to the provinces uh, that uh, uh, did not, uh, uh, especially with regard to the issues of rehabilitation. I think uh, that slide that talked, if you can go to that slide, that 
where you have provinces that uh, uh, spent, but those uh, or did not uh, provide information. Uh, I think Eastern Cape was one of them. And uh, you said you did not penalize them uh, for that because uh, uh, Yes, this is. Uh, I'm worried that uh, when we know that the conditions of road, but with regard to rehabilitation, the Eastern Cape is zero. Uh, uh, on resilient, uh, the zero. Wanted to check the, what what action. Uh, also, how then the KwaZulu Natal. Uh, there's no resilient, uh, though there is in KZN the rehabilitation, but there's no resilient. Uh, Northern Cape, uh, there's no uh, resilient uh, Western, uh, yes. So what are the reasons uh, why they're not uh, uh, providing information uh, with regard to those uh, uh, categories? Um, Chair, then on, on, the, on the issue of uh, the, the National Port Holes uh, Repair Program, uh, I see that it is said that this will be over a period of six months. Is, is the six months enough to, to deal, uh, repair all the potholes port uh, in the country? Uh, just want a, a, a clarity with regard to that. And the, the second issue related to that, I see that transport. I want to check if, uh, what if uh, provinces do not want to part uh, with their uh, uh, provincial uh, road maintenance grant? Uh, can the, I mean, the national department go ahead and have this arrangement with uh, Sandra on the repair of potholes, uh, or uh, provinces <laughs> don't have a choice to agree on or or, to, or not to agree? Um, but also related to the issue of uh, the the app, if the app can do uh, 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 the, this ITIS uh, app, uh, whether it is a road the ITS authority app or the public app, if it can do this work, why can't then the the RAMs uh, then do the same? Uh, maybe uh, use the app uh, to to load information that uh, relate to the other forms of way, whether it's rural uh, or uh, uh, other networks, uh, road networks, uh, if, if uh, this app can, can do the work, why can't we just use uh, the app uh, to, to do that? And then on the issue of uh, the, the network uh, verific verification status, which is the last one, sir. I just want to know, why other provinces have not complied? You, you indicated that uh, the are provinces that have complied, uh, Northern Cape, uh, I think um, uh, Western Cape, if not mistaken, uh, Lipop, uh, but others have not uh, 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 complied. Uh, you even indicated that a small rural municipality have been able to comply uh, in, in terms of uh, verification status, uh, but you didn't explain why others uh, are not complying. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Honorable uh, Khair, for those questions. Uh, uh, maybe just to build on the to build on the the, the point raised by Honorable Khair. On the on the uh, rural road asset management system, <clears throat> uh, in the slide uh, that speaks to to the uh, municipalities that have uh, already uh, complied, I see that uh, in the Northern Cape there is uh, only two districts, uh, Namab and John Dollar Heights that have uh, that, 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 that com complied with the that, that have uh, loaded the the uh, data uh, I want to know the 
Okay, what is the assistance that the department is giving to those uh, municipalities across the country that have uh, not loaded the data, given the importance of this of this data on the on the uh, on, on the planning, because uh, clearly, uh, without uh, the the data, uh, it becomes very difficult for the for the for the uh, department to to come to the rescue of of, of, of this uh, rural district. Uh, the the second one is the is in relation to uh, forty four. Uh, I think it's uh, district uh, municipalities. Uh, that are giving more uh, support in terms of district development model. What is the posture of the department in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, support to this uh, uh, forty-four district uh, municipalities that are that are giving uh, uh, more support in terms of uh, the district development model? Uh, <clears throat> the, the 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 second one. Share relates to to the slide uh, that was presented uh, by the by the CFO in terms of uh, the figures. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in terms of the the slide, the slide that speaks to the ninety four percent of PRMG spent against allocations over a nine year period. Uh, the, 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 the collaborate speaks to the deviation. If you could just probably speak to speak uh, more in relation to, to this slide uh, <clears throat> uh, to, to get a sense as, as, as to uh, the magnitude of, uh, of the deviation, uh, the intervention that the department could uh, 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 bring to the table to ensure that uh, uh, the uh, this uh, slide uh, of ninety four percent is addressed because clearly there will be there will be those uh, municipalities that have not uh, 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 spent uh, their their grants. Uh, the, 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 second, the third one relates to the. The, the support that the department is giving to to Sunral in terms of uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the projects that were cancelled that were supposed to be awarded, uh, <clears throat> but really given the given the importance of uh, of uh, <clears throat> of the infrastructure as a as a as a catalytic uh, sector uh, envisaged to to uh, 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 turn around the, the the economy in terms of infrastructure development, uh, particularly given the fact that uh, it's it has been in the in in in, in, in the uh, news. Uh, <clears throat> then the, the the fourth one uh, chair relates to to the slide uh, that speaks to the. The private sector involvement uh, uh, under under the I think uh, under the slide that speaks to uh, corporate social responsibility. Uh, to, to what extent uh, is the is the department engaging with the the uh, infrastructure South Africa? Uh, through the work that is done by by uh, Professor Ramakopa to uh, harness this window of opportunity, because clearly uh, one of the, the one of the tools used there is uh, adopt a road program, adopt a road program. So it would be important just to get a sense in terms of the interaction that uh, that the department uh, is working hand in hand with the with the, the Infrastructure South Africa unit in the presidency and also in collaboration with the Department of Public Works because they raised it as an issue, this matter of, uh, of, 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 of uh, the cancellation of the, of the, of the bid to award the, 
the, the drugs. Uh, other, other than that, Chair, I think I'm, I'm fine, uh, uh, except also just to, 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 to uh, put emphasis on the issue of the potholes reported by public works. Uh, if it is six months, uh, what, what, what is the target that the, that the, uh, the Department of Transport has set uh, uh, for this intervention? Because definitely, I think it's a, it's a matter of, uh, of importance that uh, the department has identified the need to strengthen the work of the local government with regard to the uh, potholes city. Uh, I would want to know uh, the target, whether the target has been set and whether are we, are we of the view that uh, uh, within six months, the target that the department has set in terms of uh, assisting municipalities to, to seal the portals, uh, they would have done that. They would have met the, the target because it is important that uh, uh, we, we, build, we build on the momentum that, that the minister has created in terms of uh, this uh, uh, court holds Varazonge, uh, and uh, are we are we of the view that after six months uh, the, the 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 intended uh, uh, work would have been finalised by the end of the six months period? Thank you. Uh, over to you, CFO. Thanks, Chair, and uh, thanks for the honorable members for their questions and uh, uh, some of them were comments. I'm, I'm going to allow uh, Chairperson through you, my colleagues to respond, and, and then I can make uh, closing remarks after they've done, and I'll just uh, perhaps start with, uh, as we have started, we'll, 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 we'll start with the rural questions related to the rural road asset management, then we'll go to the questions re relating to the PRMG, and then, uh, then we'll deal with the questions relating to the financial uh, financials of the both the grants. In, in that order, let's start with Musundes. Thank you, Chairperson. Let me attempt to provide a response uh, to a minimum of 10, 10 questions uh, as uh, uh, I was noting uh, in terms of proceedings on the line of questioning. Uh, the first question is about the graduates, the number of graduates uh, per, per municipality, district municipalities, which is also uh, in a province. The, I've got the list, uh, I'm not sure that I'll be able to say, uh, but what is interesting about this graduate as public sector, we, we employ this graduate from school and the private sector is recruiting from them. Uh, Chairperson, I'm not able to say on my side, but I can provide the list uh, uh, to, to you, Chairperson, who have got the list. The, the latest one has been 30th of June uh, this year. The second question was on make the municipal infrastructure grant, which is administered by COPTA. Need uh, funds uh, the infrastructure itself, uh, roads, water, refuse, and the uh, sports field. Uh, the big uh, majority of MIG, uh, or the big fund or budget of make funds water in this country. Uh, the roads are about 23%, uh, then the rest is shared between uh, refuse and sports and other infrastructure related activities. Now, make also funds construction and not maintenance uh, in the main. Now we're saying the road asset management data that is being collected assists the the, the make or the municipalities to plan better on roads. When we started, we didn't have the data on roads, it's about a 4%. Now we have covered in the, the whole country. Uh, the municipalities are able to do the technical reports, business plans, and prioritize which roads must be built uh, in that particular year. So there's a value to say focus also on maintenance 
of what we have built with MIG. Uh, that's what the REMS is uh, uh, trying to promote. Uh, the third one on incentives. We are saying once you do the planning, you are able to influence the strategy of the municipality. So we look at the incentives of employing this graduate, also saying if you plan properly, you are able to preserve your network. Then the incentives there is to say, continue planning, continue collecting data in a consistent way. So that's the incentives we are intending to give municipalities. They are at different stages. Uh, we look doing that. Uh, the fourth one, about 63%. The funding is there, but municipalities don't spend due to, they don't spend the budget fully due to problems like um, delay in procurement and also uh, delay in spending that money in a particular financial year. Uh, you find that municipalities in the majority, they apply for, for rollovers, which are not necessarily get approvals. The fourth one on responsibilities and uh, building capacity at local level is what we are promoting. The, the REMS now is being uh, facilitated or implemented by DOT at national level. We are saying municipalities, you own these roads, uh, take responsibility of this uh, uh, managing your asset. It shouldn't be a uh, department of transport for the future years, uh, build capacity so that you can manage this function because this is your asset at the end of the day. Uh, the sixth part, uh, the unpaved roads. Uh, uh, this country has got uh, paved and unpaved roads. Uh, it's a situation that we will sit with due to budget constraints. The majority of network is unpaved and it's sitting uh, with uh, the municipalities and uh, partly provinces. Sandra doesn't have uh, unpaved roads. So uh, the road authorities, we need to assistance with the budget so that we can surface all our roads. Uh, that is a desired outcome. Uh, the way this is uh, rural roads uh, is a program under public works. We had an engagement with Infrastructure South Africa on the two programs. Uh, it's work in progress. Uh, there's a number of uh, Willis's Repeal bridges that has been given by provinces to public works. We are aware of the number, but I'm not able to share the progress this time until uh, there's a report uh, that is shared with us. I understand the minister is in KZN in also talking on to this uh, program, Willis's The event is happening this week. Uh, regarding the reports, uh, the reports are regulatory. They are required uh, monthly and per quarter and uh, an annual evaluation. These reports are also said or are uh, sent to National Treasury as per the requirements and agreement. And this is documented in the conditional grants framework together with uh, DPME. Uh, in terms of monitoring and evaluation. The, the APE or the Team H18, let me start with that. The Team H18 means a 10 card manual for highways. Then 18, the description is data exchange format. So as department or as uh, the road authorities, we have managed to create a standard so that when you collect data, you collect it in the same way everybody then when you share the data, you share it in the same way, everybody. And now the problem we are sitting with, or the challenge currently we are sitting with, is that the 10818 has got different versions. Uh, someone, one authority, uh, Sandra, <laughs> has got an advanced, uh, what called the latest version of 10818. And we have engaged them in June to say, let's workshop the latest version for all authorities. The data is there. The challenge we're having is compatibility, as my colleague was saying. The data is there is that the compatibility to, to load it in the ITIS. 
So the assistance were given to Sandra is to say, all these authorities, they have collected the information and it is in this version of Team H18. Now we're planning to have a workshop that the latest version is workshopped with all the uh, local authorities. Uh, I think the last question will be DDM. Uh, in terms of DDM, uh, our contribution is the is the data that uh, we have managed to collect, and that data now assists into how do you call it into achieving the one plan at one district. So when the road sector comes in, you will we'll be able to say this is the plan of roads in this district and everybody agrees to that. Similarly, water and uh, other services as part of DDM. We are participating with COPTA. They have got this function. They are consulting sector departments and uh, the spheres of government. So that you, our targeted uh, implementation is informed by this uh, one plan and uh, one budget at that level. Uh, I think Chaperson, I'm covered what I've noted uh, on my side. I thank you. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, Chaperson. Um, I have noted the one from Honorable Dango on the population. Uh, density, whether when we allocate these funds, are we, sorry, when we are addressing this uh, PRMG, are we also looking at the upgrading of some of the rules? Um, I've noted this, uh, the R75 upgrades um, to try and relieve pressure on the national road, which is uh, N1. Yes, I can indicate that um, um, we do that. Uh, if you look at, the, at, the, at, 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 at one of the slides, I can't remember the slide, where we're looking at the at the uh, the the formula that is being used to allocate funds to various provinces. So issues like uh, the, the the traffic, uh, the extent of network, the topography, those are the things that we we take into consideration. And then the population density, uh, it is it is one of them because if you look at Northern Cape, this has been Gauteng. Um, Gauteng, I think it can go more than five times. To the northern Cape, but uh, you look at the population in, in uh, population density in northern Cape. It's very, very, very small. But uh, you look at the area uh, of or the, the yeah the area in Gauteng is very small, but uh, with a um, high number of pop uh, population. So those are the things that we are taking into consideration. Also, like the the fuel, uh, the, the the pattern under which uh, the fuel has been sold. And then they utilize in the in the in the kilometers. Those are the things that we we really take into consideration when we do that. And then we are aware, uh, uh, Chairperson, that uh, uh, at most we want to relieve a uh, uh, congestion on the national roads, and that can only be done if uh, the condition of our provincial roads that are parallel to the national roads are also in good conditions, so that there is a flow of uh, traffic from the main or the primary road network to the secondary road network. So we do consider that I can just indicate, um, but they, it also uh, lies or it also um, uh, depend on the province prioritization because what we might prioritize as national provinces might not see that as a priority. And uh, yeah, and then the second question that I got is from uh, uh, Honorable Matewula. Uh, on the the breakdown of the of the of the municipalities when we talk about the their network, so that I think it will uh, definitely we consider that, but it will come very clear once all the data has been uploaded on the ITIS that uh, Sandal has, uh, in the format that uh, that Sandal has requested. I think my colleague Sondezi was just indicating. Um, and the format that is required in terms of the TM each uh, thing. So that is being considered as well. And then um, uh, yeah, and then we, we are we are we are dealing with that. And then on the um, the app itself introduced uh, to report for tools, not all rural residents have got the, the capacity or people in the rural areas have, uh, are using the smartphones. 
uh, to uh, to be able to that. So yes, there is an alternative. Uh, the alternative, remember, this is a new, is something to enhance on what is happening uh, currently. So if uh, somebody in the in the rural areas they don't have the 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 the, the technology to to report the portal, they can as well uh, report to the nearest. Uh, uh, a department of transport or uh, the, the the traffic department because that would that that I think that is uh, the the only option right now because uh, the 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 technology one is the most advanced in terms of aiding to that so but they, I think uh, if we have a, an alternative um, that we can add on the current we will really appreciate that uh, honourable uh, uh, member. Uh, so that we, we know exactly what we can be able to assist with, uh, the, especially the rural uh, communities that want to report uh, the patrols in their areas. So on the, uh, the use of EPWP um, uh, employed workers, uh, are they employed temporarily or is it a, a permanent or, or whatever? So I think uh, uh, this draws back to what cabinet approved sometimes to say, um, looking at the, 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 the high number of unemployment inequality and, 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 and other issue, issues, we needed to create uh, full-time equivalent jobs, not the permanent jobs, but full-time where we can try and, and place people on, 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 equitable, sorry, on equivalent jobs rather than being uh, permanent. So I can confirm that the EPWP thinking was not to to create a, a permanent job, but to ensure that we put uh, we put uh, bread on on the table for some of the the impoverished uh, families, uh, chairperson. So and uh, that uh, that needs to be there up until the, the 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 ailing economy is brought up to speed, so that we are able to uh, to to create the more permanent and and sustainable job opportunities. Yeah, so I think I just wanted to highlight on that uh, uh, chairperson. Um, um, on the, the Samba Songa Road, uh, sorry, from uh, the cost, the R40, I don't know how to put it, from Gobe to uh, Sishuba Road, I didn't capture that in, in full, but the, uh, what I can, I can get, is that uh, there was a, a, a 40 million rent that was allocated or that was paid for the contractors to construct that particular road uh, uh, using a wheelbarrow and the condition of the road is not that good. Um, what I can indicate, Chairperson, remember um, uh, we have got three spheres of government, the provincial, the municipal and the national road, each with its own um, uh, independence in terms of a uh, and uh, section four and five of the constitution. So for us is to supplement what the provinces and municipalities are currently doing and also provide that monitoring role to ensure that uh, what has been uh, put as a target is indeed achieved. So uh, when it comes to who gets um, appointed or contracted to do a particular work, uh, we don't have a, a say to that. But uh, we come, uh, as uh, my colleague was saying, with the standard, uh, the cultural standard, to ensure that whatever intervention is brought is in line with the with the cultural manual. Um, if, for in case, somebody says doing a rehab um, on that particular condition of a road network, or is uh, is um, uh, going through the wetlands and uh, various uh, whatever. If there, there are calves or bridges to be constructed, what method and what quality uh, and standard do we need to apply? Mm -hmm. That is what uh, the Department of Transport and National comes in. But uh, yeah, those are the things that uh, we are doing. But um, at the practical part, Chairperson, we do have a team. So we have uh, clustered all our provinces into nine uh, with every person specifically allocated as a cluster leader from national to work with the provinces in terms of monitoring the project. So it starts with the, with the, 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 the identif identification of the project, um, uh, seeing that the project is, is aligned to the, uh, the, uh, to the uh, provincial route maintenance grant framework, 
And once it, it complies, then we go to the division of revenue, we upload it into the system, we put it in the, uh, what we call the root, uh, sorry, the, the IRM infrastructure um, uh, reporting module that has been managed by the, 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 the National Treasury to ensure that uh, once a project has been approved, uh, gazetted by the provincial legislature, it is on the blue book, and then uh, we monitor that project according to that. That is exactly what the, what we are doing. But uh, when they contract or they, 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 they award tenders, we don't get involved uh, at that particular level. Uh, yeah, and then um, uh, the other one is say, uh, how do we monitor? Okay, I think I've just captured that. And then um, uh, still under um, uh, honorable member, I say, uh, there is a road between Chimange, um, which now becomes a white well event over a kilometer, I mean, five kilometer stretch. What program do we have to monitor? So as I'm saying, is, uh, from the beginning, once a road has been approved, and then uh, we, we, we monitor the expenditure, we have got what we call um, uh, a risk, risk assessment every quarter, uh, every month, actually, we, we, we monitor its expending this as be what has been allocated. And if it's allocated, then uh, the, 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 the team that is managed by <clears throat> uh, Madam Zagani, unfortunately, she couldn't uh, manage to log on because of uh, the network at the department. They look at the, in the RM and look at the expenditure in the previous month and then uh, pick up projects that are with a high expenditure and dispatch uh, the team to go and do the visual condition assessment uh, with the technical team that deals with the standards. So that is exactly what we do in terms of monitoring those. And then um, once that is done, there will be a report looking at the number of, uh, I mean, kilometers that uh, this has been the target, whether that has been achieved, how many people were employed, how many women, how many youth, the impact of that project on this, because it's not just about the, uh, the infrastructure is also value for money and also the impact to the local people. Those are the things that uh, we have, uh, we have uh, put together in our program to ensure that we achieve all those indicators. So yeah, the next one that I've noted, I think a uh, chairperson that relates to this is the late submission of the pre presentation. Uh, this one, I won't comment on that. Uh, maybe uh, my seniors will, uh, will apologize in terms of the uh, the 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 challenges that the, or what led to this, I'm um, really not uh, not uh, yeah. So on the RMs, I think uh, my colleagues have uh, have noted that, and also the 63 percent has been addressed. What is the link between Welisizwe? I think uh, um, so have also my colleague have also spoken to that, um, uh, which is C26 and C27 rural roads and rural bridges which is something that the minister, so the president during his uh, last state of the nation address indic indicated the number of bridges that needed to be uh, constructed during the current financial year and the number of rural roads uh, that need needed to be upgraded from gravel to paved network. So we are working closely uh, with, uh, with uh, the Department of, uh, of Public Works and Infrastructure especially with uh, Dr. Ramahopa and the team in, the, in, the, in ISA. We, we meet with Zanwile um, uh, more often and then so, so that we do the alignment, especially on the Welisizio bridge. So um, my colleague have already covered that. And then, um, uh, yeah, and then uh, on, and on this slide that the, the honorable uh, chairperson, the co-chair have indicated on the, uh, the on the projects on hold, um, uh, yeah, what were on hold? Um, I think uh, when that was done, maybe my colleague uh, Zagan will be able to talk to that. That slide was to be to be hidden because uh, that slide is says the one that we present normally every quarter, just to look at that particular month. What what are the projects on on design? What are on construction? What are on this? So that slice, because uh, on hold, we'll talk about those uh, where we are applying the 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 the, the cost, sorry the, the the penalties that comes with the 
uh, Division of Revenue Act if, a, for, a, for in case, a, a province fails to comply? And then what measures do we take as National Department of Transport? So we'll put, uh, actually we'll hold, talk to the province and then get the reason why they're not complying, what measures are in place to address or speed up um, uh, uh, the process to, get to, to um, what can I say, capture or to, to come to speed with what has been planned. So we will put the money on hold up until there is a report that comes from the province to say, yes, we have noted, and this is our catch-up plan to try and address the issue. So that slide, I think my colleague, she did uh, hide it, but uh, unfortunately it is it came right now. That is exactly how we utilize the, uh, we monitor the project uh, based on that. Uh, what action has been taken for not having a target of resealing, um, especially what there was what came on one of the slides where the Eastern Cape didn't have any projects on reseal. So what I can indicate is not only reseal chairperson is in all the indicators that the, the provinces are, are doing. If for in case the, uh, the province have realized that the, the condition of the road network have, have gone so bad that uh, we cannot do a reseal on a particular road you will see, I mean, they will decide not to do a resale, but to do a rehab. And when they do a, 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 I mean, their network is more on rehab, definitely there will be low expenditure or low target on resale because of a resale, it goes, I mean, re, resale, it then uh, goes to, it end up being a, a rehabilitation. So we don't penalize them per se, because uh, uh, what what is more important is that they address the condition of their root network, either on, on putting a new surface, a surface or on the, because uh, yeah, those are the things that I think I just wanted to indicate that uh, it's not necessarily that when they don't have a target on resale, it will mean that they've defaulted. It will mean that they've prioritized, they've got more capital to address the, the road through rehab rather than resale. So maybe I'll just go past that one. Uh, on the on the portal uh the the way we have put the target, we said we we launch on the eighth of August, and then we anticipate to take this program over the next six months to assist provinces to do the portaling, and then ensure that our routes are back to square one. So what I can indicate, chairperson, maybe upfront, is that the a portal is just a, a a symptom of poor preventative maintenance. If we don't apply those grass cutting, we don't do resale, we don't do, you know, those routine road maintenance, uh, the road, to, the condition of the road will then deteriorate such that uh, water stays on the road. And then once the, road, the water is there for a particular period, it then uh, there is an ingress onto the road surface and then a, a patrol will then emerge. So we will want to deal with that now now uh, for then for now until the end of the the six months once we come to that particular level we believe that we should have addressed the critical patrol because you can't step stop a patrol from forming but we will uh, we will we can only stop a patrol once we have produced a preventative maintenance so after six months we will come together with the provinces and municipalities and review the program because we don't want the, the portal program to be a permanent intervention. It's, it's just temporary up until we have uh, addressed the backlog in terms of the maintenance. So um, I think uh, 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 let me just uh, pause there in terms of the, 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 the portal um, on how we, we will want to address them. It's not permanent, it is temporary. And if a, a road cannot be patched anymore, then we need to go beyond the patrol because you patch it today, tomorrow, it will start somewhere checkers. So um, on the, um, what is the, the province does not want to participate in the patrol program? Um, maybe I can just indicate that the, when the provinces submit their annual performance plan, the APP, they do have all the indicators, the six indicators, the rehab, resale, upgrading, all those. So portal patching, which we call it a blacktop patching, is one of the, the indicators that they submit. 
up unless if they, they show to us that the, all the, the roads are so good, but we know that the uh, patrol can form at any time. If a truck comes there and find that the surface is not uh, even, and then something might happen to it. And then um, I think I've, I've covered more, but let me just go to uh, Co-Chair Moimang, where you had say, talking about the rural roads uh, management system. I think we have gone that in 94. Private, or on the private sector uh, involvement, CSI, what is DOT engaging with? with uh, I think we covered that one. Uh, yeah, for me, Chairperson, I think we, we I tried to address all, all those I managed to, to, to note down. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dadma Pagela. I see Sakane has a uh, uh, hand up. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, mine was basically just to maybe fill in the gaps where um, certain responses couldn't be provided. I'm not sure if the CFO is able to just go to the slide. There was a question regarding where does the 14 million come from? I wasn't able to place it on the table because it went uh, by very quickly. So maybe I'll just start there and then address the other two questions that came up. It's before this, so you go to the financial tables. I think it's a table before this year, the one just before this slide. One further. Yeah. Um, there was a question about a 14 million. I'm not sure which one exactly is being referred to on this particular slide. Uh, I'm trying to check also. I think it's a question that was posed by Anarabha Pai. Yeah. Anarabha Pai? Uh, if you look at the Western Cape. Yeah, Western Cape, yes. Yes, uh, the 14 yeah. uh, million. Yes. At the Northern, at the Western Cape one, at the bottom there. Uh, under deviation oh. received versus actual expenditure. Oh, okay. Um, so basically all the provinces are required to report their expenditure for all projects that are on the ground on the IRM system that is hosted by the National Treasury. So um, this is a requirement for all infrastructure departments and it's done nationwide. So basically at the beginning of the financial year, they're going to capture all the allocations as you see on the second column. So you see each province coming through for what they received over the nine year period. In cases where just like you see on the deviation table that's appearing there, uh, the second to last column, all the reds that you're seeing there are there because provinces didn't manage to finish whatever they were given. So oh, these yeah. reds are what contributes to that 5.82 that is underspent. So that 14 million that you see for Western Cape most probably came from the equitable share. So it does so happen that certain projects cannot be split in terms of their source of funding upon capturing because it's either too cumbersome or the province is struggling in terms of having that appearing um, to show, um, especially with your core funded projects. So once the province uh, exceeds its 100%, it's clear that the other funds came from the equitable share budgets. And um, in terms of equitable share, you've got provinces that do not have that at all, but I know Western Cape is one of those that are funded when it comes to that. So that 14 million deviation in black shows you that they had other funds over and above the PRMG, as um, my colleagues already alluded to the fact that PRMG is a conditional grant, but more especially supplementary. The idea is that each province has equitable share, which is what they're going to use to do their upgrades and all their excessive rehab that needs to be done on their roads. Uh, but then the PRMG comes in to just supplement the maintenance part of things. So that's where it comes from. I think the chairperson also uh, brought a question regarding the deviation as to what is that deviation 
and what it is that we are doing to take off the deviation. So the deviation column doesn't mean that there's something excessively wrong that the provinces did. It just shows you the difference in spending. So looking at the fact that on this particular slide, over the nine years, we've got the reds more than the black. It shows you that there's a more under expenditure than the provinces exceeding. So that 5.5 billion that you see there was underspent over the nine years at the time of reporting. So as I've mentioned, the IRM, it allows them to capture um, the expenditure, but everything that you see on here is data that comes from the system as at the year end when we do the closeout report. So uh, it's reported as the provinces go come here and we draw the data from the system. However, that under expenditure doesn't speak for what happened after that process has been closed. So it's just a reflection of what spending looked like when the year closed. However, each province goes on further to engage their provincial treasuries and national treasury in request for rollover funding, just to make sure that they find themselves at 100% spend. So this just doesn't get reported on the IRM as it's often done uh, or concluded more or less around this time of year, which is your July and August. So yeah, it's not a deviation and most provinces have requested um, for their funds to be rolled over, most have been approved. So chances are that 5% that you see there has been um, utilized towards roads. We just flag it as a department to make sure that provinces are aware that the, the ideal situation is to use up their funds in the year that has been allocated. However, understanding that there are times when they've got commitments, however, not able to spend before we close the year end of March. Um, that was addressing the issue from the chairperson and the 14 million. There was a question on project status. Please move on to the next uh, slide, CFO. I think it was regarding the projects on hold. Okay, this one. Um, it's basically something that we do, as my colleague has already mentioned, at the end of every quarter. So based on our m and &E activities, we sit with each province individually and engage with how they spend the PRMG funds as they are bound by certain conditions. So the idea with PRMG projects is that they're only going to use it on shovel ready uh, projects, but it does happen that your province either doesn't have equitable share, which is something that we're struggling to have come to the fore um, from the provincial legislature side. And sometimes you do find that uh, provinces are using their in-house teams for implementation. That's why you will see uh, your capital costs coming through. So the top part that I've highlighted there in blue is basically, I've called it planning stages because we see that as capital expenditure, just mainly based on the fact that PRMG doesn't expect to see their design, feasibility, tendering, and all those uh, cost side hand over to contractor and your on hold. So in cases where you see on hold coming through, this happens when provinces are either having to stop a project in the process of implementation due to maybe the communities coming through and hijacking sites because of that whole 30% subcontracting that um, uh, most contractors are struggling with uh, from the communities. So um, either that or you find that the province has um, litigation cases that they're dealing with and certain projects had to be put uh, to a stop until they're resolved. So on hold is basically a capital cost that the provinces end up having to bear when such situations occur. Um, the rest is basically, you'll see when you're terminated, these are costs that come through. You've got your not applicable, this hasn't been determined as well. However, the DOT has been trying to engage with National Treasury to get to a point where the system has um, what you call input controls to make sure that certain costs are not captured under a grant such as this. However, this is an ongoing process and we haven't managed to win at this point. So that's why you'll see that, um, that 4.8 billion coming through. And maybe it's good to also mention that it's sitting at 6.65 right now, 6.65%, uh, which is a huge improvement from the past because we've had cases where in some years we were sitting at about your 12%. So on average, this is where we are over the nine Yes, and maybe it's also worth noting that um, this is basically based on what I've got on the system. You'll see that the slide shows it's from 2015-16 only because that was the 
the time that NT put in place this particular system of reporting. So we've got those first few years at the start of PRMG that are not accounted for in terms of a particular system um, that DOT could use. Um, I hope I've answered most of the questions that were not covered. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Kani, uh, for that. Uh, any follow-up, uh, honorable members? Yeah, any, any question that you might uh, have a uh, second bite? Uh, honorable Khair? Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> um, I, I just wor worried about the target of six months, uh, Chair. I don't know whether there was any need to, 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 to put uh, up to the public, the issue of uh, the six months. Other than that, uh, the uh, government uh, uh, in, in all spheres uh, uh, focus on 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 uh, on repairing uh, the the potholes. Um, because uh, if they don't meet uh, the the six months, uh, I know the. Uh, uh, Mr. Mapagela was saying that they will then have a meeting and sit down and assess. Uh, but up there, uh, the issue would be that uh, you have not met the six months. There are still potholes everywhere. Uh, uh, I mean, I think six months is uh, I mean, too soon. Uh, uh, I don't know whether there was any need uh, for it. Uh, I know it's got to do with the uh, funding as well. Uh, I'm just concerned about the six months. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, next week it will be the 6th of uh, September, and the, there's not much that has been done. So one month will go uh, without having seen anything much. Uh, so in two weeks' time, we, you'll, you'll be on the 6th of uh, uh, September. Uh, I'm just worried about the, the time frame on, on the uh, uh, portfolio. Uh, repairing. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Honorable Khai. Honorable Matibula. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Maybe if we can get the contact details of the of the one who's serving in the risk management team so that when we come across the challenges, some challenges, we can direct the question to them to assist us, Chair. That was my request. Okay. Thanks. Uh, uh, CFO. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, we will uh, communicate the official responsible for the risk management on the on the PRMG, and and communicate with the committee accordingly. Thanks, Chair. Uh, later yes. today. Thank you, thank you, uh, CFO, and the team. Uh, for a comprehensive uh, response uh, to the uh, engagement that were posed by honorable members of the Select Committee on Transport. Uh, indeed, uh, the update uh, uh, helped us a lot in terms of uh, appreciating the, 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 the approach, uh, not only in terms of the rural road management system, but also key intervention uh, program that the department has, uh, has produced. And uh, we are looking forward to, to uh, see the, the department through the collaboration of the, of the province, uh, through the provincial road maintenance grant, uh, uh, ensuring that the roads are paved, roads are sealed, the airport roads are at loose. Uh, so that we are able to instill confidence in the work, in, in the work that the government does. Uh, <clears throat> what will be critical is uh, indeed uh, to take into account the, I think the issue that uh, Honorable Hai has raised to say, uh, <clears throat> it is important that uh, uh, we keep our the public informed in an event uh, uh, we have not made uh, any serious impact uh, upon the upon the completion of the six months, so that we are then able to to also take our constituency into confidence in terms of uh, what measures will be put in place to remedy the situation. 
But other than that, uh, on behalf of the select committee, let me express uh, uh, our gratitude to, to yourself, uh, the CFO, and also your team. Uh, indeed, we are with Mr. Mapagela uh, last week in the province uh, from Tontal uh, Highway Development uh, District uh, to the uh, France Bart District Municipality. Uh, he appreciates uh, one of the, the concerns uh, that we raised around the Road 31 uh, that uh, keeps on capturing the center stage uh, in terms of uh, uh, its, uh, its, 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 its state. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward uh, to uh, the interaction between the team and the minister so that uh, the assistance and the intervention uh, uh, from the, uh, the department to the province uh, materializes. And on that note, uh, let me again also express uh, uh, my gratitude to uh, the honorable members of the state committee for ensuring that indeed this meeting becomes a success uh, to engagement. Of course, uh, appreciating the concerns raised by members that uh, it's important that uh, at least uh, time has to receive the, the uh, presentations so that we also allow our research team to make a reflection and to lift some of the issues that they would want us to, to raise uh, with, the, with, the, with, with the team. And uh, we are looking forward to our next engagement. So therefore the the meeting having also expressed gratitude to the to the uh, management team of the of parliament of the committee, the researcher, the committee secretary, and also our communication team uh, and PMG uh, that uh, me formally and officially attend the meeting. Thank you, thank you, honourable members. Thank you, chair. Thank you, chair and honourable members. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. You managed to log in. <laughs> yes, Chair. <laughs> Recording next stopped. Week, next, week, ne next week, we might have a challenge uh, with the ministerial briefing. Uh, uh, which department are we hosting next week? As public service and administration. Public service and administration. We, yes. we were just going to check uh, uh, in terms of uh, our, the ministerial briefing, it looks like it's both Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, which might prompt us to postpone our meeting. Okay, no, I will check, I will check. Yeah, just check the program, yeah. Okay, Thank okay. You. Yeah. Good.